Hi everyone, how are you? How's everything? I hope everything is going well with you. We have talked a lot about the Laplace transform so far, and the last thing that I was telling you last session was about the integral equation and the differential equations in Laplace domain. Also, if you remember, I gave you an exercise at the end that I had given you a circuit, including an inductor and a capacitor, and I ask you to try to analyze that circuit given the Laplace table in which you know how to apply derivative and integration in Laplace domain. So now I'm sure that you all solved that problem, but now I'm going to tell you about a concept that is a result of that conversion from time to Laplace and I'm gonna look at it from the circuit standpoint and you will see that how much it can make our lives easier when we're dealing with the circuits including capacitors and inductor with initial conditions so the main topic of our uh, discussion today is initial conditions but what is initial condition as you know the main circuit elements that we deal with them in linear circuits are resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Resistors, they do not store energy. So when you turn on the power supply, they, uh, the current passes through them. When you turn off, the current stops passing through them. But the capacitor and inductors are not like this. When you turn on the power supply, they can store some energy inside them. Usually, the capacitor the holds the energy, stores the energy in the format of voltage, and the inductor stores the energy in the format of current. But uh, it, I, this is just I'm, I'm, this is, uh, a figure of speech in a way that the format of the voltage and the format of current might not be 100% accurate, but keep it in mind this way, that capacitors store the energy in the format of voltage and inductors store the energy in the format of current because of a reason that you will see. But how should we deal with these components in a circuit? Because the thing is, when you turn off these circuits, this energy is still there still stored on those components and when you want to turn them back on those components they have some stored energy inside them that now we call it initial condition so that stored energy makes the circuit to behave differently so that's why we need to know how to deal with this situation in time domain, dealing with that situation is really complicated and tedious. In Laplace domain, though, it's actually pretty straightforward. Let's go over this equation that finds the current in a capacitor in time domain the relationship between the current and the voltage in a capacitor in time domain is I equals C dV over dT. This you remember this, I guess, from linear circuits one. Now, let's take a Laplacian from both sides. The left-hand side, the Laplacian of I in T will be I of S. The right hand side, we know that the Laplacian of the derivative is simply multiplication by S. But there was another thing we were used to call it minus, if for the, if you look at the table, it says SF of S minus F0 negative or F0. What is this F0 negative? And in, in here I wrote it V0 negative. This is actually the initial condition. So for this capacitor, 
in S domain, the current equals CSV minus CV0. So if, if this capacitor has no energy stored inside, it means if it has no initial condition, then this part will be zero. So I simply will be CSV, which makes our lives much easier. That's why you will say that you can replace the impedance of this with one over CS, right? Because V over I, if I is CSV, V over I will be one over CS. As you see, this is the value of the capacitors when we deal with them in Laplace domain. You remember, right? In Laplace domain, we replace capacitor with one over SC, inductors with LS, and we deal with them like resistors. So we can make them series, parallel, exactly like resistors. That's it. We call it impedance. But if if it has some initial condition, V0, it means when this V0 is not a zero, then this element is also present in the description of the current in the plus domain. So IS will be CSV minus CV0 negative. So how should we show it in the circuit level, so imagine this is a capacitor with initial condition. So I know that this is in time domain, the same I tried like this. I know that in Laplace domain, this I has to become CSV minus CV0 negative. So I can model it with a capacitor without initial condition parallel with the current source with the value of CV0 negative. Why can I do it like this? Because now look at this I here in this branch. This I in this branch will be the I here and the I here, right? So the I in the branch of this capacitor without initial condition will be simply CSV, right? Because the impedance is 1 over SC. So V over 1 over SC will be CSV. And this current, this is, a, in the, this is an independent current source with the value of CV0 negative. So the, the current here in this main branch will be CSV, but since this one is coming the other direction, it's going to be minus CV0 negative. So this equation that we de derived from the Laplace table can actually be expressed in this circuit model. So long story short, we can simply model a capacitor with initial condition with a capacitor without initial condition parallel with the current source with the value of CV zero negative. Sometimes you might say, okay, I, I have a circuit that everything is in series. I really don't want to have an extra parallel current source. It's going to be a hassle to analyze it either with nodal analysis or loop or something. So you have no problem we can also model it this way just with a simple source transformation we can model a capacitor with initial condition with a capacitor without initial condition series with a voltage source with the value of vc0 negative over s so Either again, what where is this VC zero negative over S coming from? Look at these two, just a simple source transformation. We just need to multiply this by this impedance, right? To give you the value of the new source. So it will be 
C cancel C it will be B C zero over S. So both this one and this one are the correct models of a capacitor with initial condition in Laplace domain. So from now on if you had a circuit in which there was an element a capacitor with initial condition you just redraw that circuit and you model your capacitor with initial condition either with a capacitor without initial condition parallel with a current source with the value of CB0 negative or you model it with the capacitor without initial condition series with a voltage source with the value of V0 negative over S. So exactly the same story is correct for inductors. So here I have tried to show this whole idea in a table format for resistor, capacitor, inductor. So resistor, actually you know resistors they cannot ever, ever have a uh, have an initial condition. So resistor they always look like a resistor, a domain here there. They just a simple resistor. But capacitors no, as I said, we can either, in a parallel mode, I can model it with a capacitor without initial condition, parallel with a current source, or with a capacitor without initial condition, series with a voltage source. In the case that we have an inductor, can I remind you of the formula for the inductor? The formula that you find V, the formula that you find V in terms of I for inductors was L dI over dt, right? So you do the same operations that we did for the capacitor that I just showed you in the previous slide. So you will end up having this story that your V will be LSI minus LI0 negative. So that means that your inductor can either be modeled, your inductor with initial condition can either be modeled with an inductor without initial condition that we simply showed with LS, series with a voltage source with the value of L I zero negative or if you wanted a parallel mode circuit model using the source transformation you can use this one so you can model the inductor with initial condition with an inductor without initial condition parallel with a current source with the value of I L zero over S. This one and this one, they can be used interchangeably in any circuit that you want. So I would like to invite you to keep this table for these two in mind. If you remember one of them, the other one can be driven easily using the source transformation, right? So keep in mind that how do we model a capacitor with initial condition and how do we model an inductor with with initial condition in Laplace domain and when you replace them with this circuit model in any circuit that you have your lives will be much easier and you will simply deal with them as normal impedances in a circuit so now I would like to invite you to try to resolve this problem that I asked you last session. Now use the technique that I just told you. In this problem, you have one resistor, one inductor, and one capacitor. The initial condition for the inductor is one amps. The initial condition for the capacitor is minus two volts. Now you remember why I told you in the beginning that 
capacitors they store the energy in the format of voltage inductors they store it in the format of current exactly because of this so now I just want you to redraw the circuit using either the parallel mode or the series mode that you just learned using this table so redraw the circuit I think in this case since the circuit is in series I think it's better to use the series models so you should add a voltage source here for the capacitor and a voltage source here for the uh, for capacitor and the voltage source here for the inductor just the values for the if you go to the table for the capacitor the voltage source value will be vc over s vc0 over s for the inductor will be l i 0 then we can analyze the new circuit it's going to be a simple circuit in s domain you will have three voltage sources that you can simply add them up and then you have three impedances that you can add these ones up so to find i because here you have to find i right to find i you will just divide v total v over total z and you find the answer in laplace domain then you can use the laplace inverse laplace to take it back to the time domain i really urge you to make sure that you uh, try this circuit with this method and tell me the result in the next session thank you very much have fun take care good luck